Hi, I am Hemdi. This video is to introduce engineering project managers to the basics of sensors, mainly those related to manufacturing. I will go through five sensors that I have used extensively in my projects. I will go only as deep as I think you need to know as a project manager. Any further learning on these sensors will be up to you. There has not been any need for other types of sensors in my applications so far. My goal is for you to understand these five sensors and be able to select the best one for your application. I also want you to be able to converse with technicians about sensors. These five sensors are photo eye sensors, retro reflective photo eye sensors, laser distance sensors, proximity switches, and limit switches. I also cover some additional information on sensors in general at the end. So let's move on to the first sensor. The first sensor is the photo eye sensor. In this case it is a through beam and there is a transmitter and a receiver. They need to be aligned so that the laser from the transmitter is properly detected by the receiver. If there is a lot of distance between the two, be cautious of vibrations in the environment. They can easily cause faults or detect parts when they should not. The photo eye sensors can be either light operate or dark operate. When it is set to light operate, it sends an OK output when the receiver receives light from the transmitter. On the other hand, dark operate makes it send an OK output when it does not receive light from the transmitter. It is widely used to detect the presence of parts. A rough example is shown here. The second sensor is the retroreflective photo eye sensor. This sensor detects the presence of reflective tape when the light it emits is reflected back to the source. That is why the angle at which the sensor is shooting toward the reflective tape is important. Advanced technology has allowed better detection in recent years, but I only recommend this if your reflective tape will stop right in front of your sensor before the detection takes place. The beam size and intensity can be adjusted based on the distance so that it is only shooting at the detection area and most of the beam is reflected back. I have used these sensors whenever the difference between the two different carriers or cards were not physically apparent. If they are, then I have used the laser distance sensor that we will cover next. For example here, if one card has been damaged and needs to be removed by the system, that card will be marked with a reflective tape. The system is programmed to send the card to a different path when the retroreflective sensor detects the reflective tape. Next is my favorite, laser distance sensors. They are very versatile and can be used in most applications I have encountered. The long range and accurate ones are a bit more expensive, but definitely worth the initial investment that will save hours of configuring and tweaking down the road. It can be used to both detect differences and presence of parts. We only need to mount a sensor on one side, as compared to the photo eye where you have a transmitter and a receiver. The range of detection is configured and an OK signal is output by the sensor when anything is within that range. More than one range can be set at a time with newer sensors and they send multiple outputs. An example is shown here. The fourth one is the proximity switch, which detects metal when it is close. The range can be up to approximately 30 millimeters and is based on the circumference of the sensor. It is great for detecting the presence of cards or parts in systems before it operates. It can also be used to detect different variations of parts in static assembly stations. An example of such an application is shown here. The last sensor is the limit switch, which is used to detect the presence of a component or for counting and sequencing components. Every time the whisker is actuated as shown here, when a part or component goes through, a signal is sent by the sensor. The whisker springs back to its original location when it is not actuated. Limit switches are also used when cards are going around corners and we want to ensure that the card is out of the corner before the other one goes in. So a limit switch is put at the entrance and other one at the exit. The counter goes to 1 whenever the, a card enters the curve and goes back to 0 when it exits. The system then only sends a card in when the count is 0. I'll share some more information regarding the functions of sensors. Most of these sensors can come with amplifiers, which do most of the programming and calculation for us. 
the output can either be discrete or analog. For discrete, the value is either on or off, 1 or 0. For analog, the actual value is measured and will be sent as an output. Depending on the type of sensor you're using, it can be the value of the distance, the temperature, noise, and so on. For example, when using distance laser sensors, we can either let it do the calculation and send a discrete output, or have it send an analog output with the exact distance it is measuring, and then have our system perform the calculation and judge the value. The number of outputs you need for your system should also be considered. Some sensors have more than one output. Going back to what we talked about with the laser distance sensors, multiple range can be set, and each range can correspond to an output. So if you need four different detection ranges, it might be best to look for a sensor with four different outputs. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope this has provided you with the basic information you need as a project manager to handle projects where these sensors are used. The more detail you know about each sensor, the better off you are, but we only have so much time. Having an awareness of what the sensors do is more important from my perspective. I think you should also look into other sensors not covered here for your own awareness, such as ultrasonic sensors and contact sensors. It is critical for you as a project manager to get input from your technicians. Also, whenever possible, see what is already working in your environment and replicate it. Do what works. Ensure that whichever sensor you use is readily available for replacement is needed. If you think I should add any other information to this video for engineering project managers, Please share in the comment box below.